we open our as we open our worship we light this candle as a reminder of christ's presence with us like god calling to samuel this light calls to us in the darkness and invites us to bring light may this light guide us through worship into service and i, I assure you it is lit just very tiny right now Thank you, Stephen. Uh, ben, if you wouldn't mind offering the responsive parts, I'll, uh, the, the bolded parts, I'll offer the unbolded parts. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us call ourselves into worship. By your name and because of your gifts, you are called to pray, to act, to sing, and to serve. Speak, O Lord and inspire us to use all that we have and all that we owe in service to and celebration of you. By your name and because of your gifts, you are called to a future that is mysterious and yet filled with God's light. Speak, O oh Lord, and show us where we might go using your strength to support and your power to heal. By your name and because of your gifts, you have been called to this time and place. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. Let us pray. Transforming God, as we celebrate 56 years in service to you as Quispam Sis United Church, we come to you seeking guidance, wisdom, a way forward in your love. Open your word to us and call us by name. Inspire us, encourage us, and empower us to take what we learn and share it with the world. Help us to see within ourselves what you have always known. We offer this and all our prayers in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Stephen will lead us in singing, I have called you by your name. More voices, number 161. Well. 
and ask you now to strive. I will not abandon you. All my promises are true. You are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. I will help you learn my name. You are mine. Read it written in my people. Help them like water in my name speak the word your soul can claim for for jesus body given long ago i know you will need my touch as you go feel it pulsing in creation's ebb and flow like the Choosing faith in spite of doubt Hold the hem of Jesus' robe Then let it go I have given you a name It is mine I have given you my spirit as a sign With my wonder in your soul Make my wounded children whole and tell my precious people they are mine. Now let us offer together this uh, prayer of confession, a call to God on those times where we have stumbled, where we have failed to follow the light and chosen to stay asleep instead. Let us pray together. Beckoning God in the stillness of the night, you called Samuel into your service. Call to us as you did to him. We know that we often walk this world with ears and eyes closed to your presence. And so shake us from this self-imposed slumber. Remind us that you are our God and that we are your people and that we have much to do in your name. Forgive us when we ignore your call or when we listen to the world more than to you. When we do wake to, your, to you calling our name, may we have the strength to shout back eagerly, here I am, and may we have the courage to heed your call. We ask this and all our prayers in the name of Christ, through whom we receive the Holy Spirit and direction on our way. Amen. God's love never ends, and God's call to us is daily, sometimes coming to us even before we wake. Let us celebrate God's love and forgiveness as we strive to live in the way of Christ. Amen. Okay, I'm going to invite Amy and Jacob to come on over. Come on over. There's lots of room. Let's see if I can go over. So, come on over here. So, not in front of Amy. <laughs> you see yourself right there? There you go. <laughs> there. So, what I want to ask you two, and uh, you too, uh, Ben and Ethan, uh, is because today's reading is something that you, you guys are going to do. Uh, but before we get to it, I wanted to ask you guys to do something for me and for the church as we celebrate this anniversary, okay? okay. So people often say that children are the future of the church and sometimes that true, that's true, but the reality is, is that this is your church too, right now, right? Yeah. So I want you to be like Samuel and I want you to say, here I am and say one thing that you can do for God one thing you can do for the church, whichever one. So whoever wants to go first. Me. Go ahead. Um, Say, here I am. Here I am. And? and what? What's the thing you can do for God of the church? Um, I can pray for him. You can pray, yeah. Anything else? Um, I could, um, 
bring him to my Jonies. You could bring, yeah, like flat Jesus on everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Ben. Hey. You, oh, there. That sounds like Ben. Uh, here I am. And be nice to people. Yeah, that's an awesome one. Ethan or Amy, who's first? Me. All right. Oh, we got oh. it. We got it. <laughs> Kate, go ahead. Uh, here I am. Um, what can you do? I could draw pictures. You could draw pictures? Yeah. And I could pray. You can pray? Okay. Ethan, what about you? All right. Here I am, and I will share my gifts with the church. Ah, uh, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. Now, that was all of the young among us. Is there anybody young at heart that uh, wants to say, here I am, and what they bring to the church? There's a lot of young at heart out there. Here I am. Here I am, and we, we will sing. Ah, uh, Wendy and Sue, thank you. Anybody else? Here I am, and I will sing too. Ruth, thank you. And here I am, and outreach will send on the wonderful generosity of the congregation to others. Oh, thank you, Barb. Nobody else? Well, I'll go. Here I am, and I will continue to strive to follow God's light wherever it may go. And sometimes it's, it leads to some hard places, but I know that we'll get there together, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So can we pray together before we move on to the reading? Yep. Okay. So just repeat after me and Ben and Ethan, you can as well. Dear God. Dear God. Help us your children. Help us your children. To follow in your way. To follow in your way. To hear your voice. To hear your voice. And to answer. And to answer. We offer this and all our prayers. We offer this and all our prayers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now uh, Stephen is going to lead us in singing our sung prayer of illumination. think that uh, Ethan, Ben, Amy, and Jacob are going to be leading us. So Ethan, you can kick us off. You're muted though. All right. Once upon a time, there is a boy named Samuel who is ministering to the Lord under the prophet Eli. God didn't speak often in these days. Visions of God, God's will was not widespread. Eli had been serving God for a long time, and while his sight was so poor that he could not see, he still felt the light of God shining on him. Still, he knew that his light would soon pass to another. His servant, the boy named Samuel, was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called out to Samuel, saying, Samuel, Samuel, here I am. And Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. What? No, I did not call you. Go back to bed, Samuel. So he went and lay down. But then the Lord called again. Samuel! So Samuel got up and went to Eli again and said, Here I am. Here I am, for you called me. Samuel, I did not call you. My son, please go back to bed and sleep. Now Samuel was very confused because he didn't know yet that it was God talking to him, and it had not been revealed to him what God wanted him to do. But then again, for a third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel, Samuel! So Samuel got up again and went to Eli and said, Here I am. 
Here I am, before you called me. By now, Eli knew that something was up, and he knew that it must be God calling out to the boy Samuel. So Eli said to Samuel, Samuel, I did not call you, but I believe you. Someone is calling. So go lay down, try to sleep, and if you hear them calling, I want you to say these words. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and lay down in the same place as before. This time, though, the Lord came and stood there in the temple where Samuel was sleeping, and God called to him as before. Samuel! Samuel! And this time, Samuel said, Speak for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Look, Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. Soon Eli's time as a prophet will come to an end. I wanted to walk though his sons, but, but they turned away from me. More than that, they blasphemed against me, so I am done with Eli's sons. And Eli's time serving me is coming to an end. Samuel lay there until morning, wondering what God had said to him. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and there stood Eli. Samuel wanted to tell Eli everything he had heard and seen, but he was afraid, not wanting to hurt Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, here I am. What was it that God told you? Do not hide it from me. I can handle it. And may God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me of all the things that the Lord has told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then Eli nodded and said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Don to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel. Thank you very much, guys. That was a great job. And now in, uh, in response, as we prepare to, uh, to reflect on the word, we are going to hear a special gift of music. So let us sit back as we take in the sounds. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Marilyn, Heather, and Ashley for sending in that gift of music for this, our anniversary Sunday. Let's pray. 
We wait on you, O God, to call to us in the midst of our lives. So often we walk in a waking slumber, oblivious to the wonders of your creation and the wounds of your people, ears closed to the call, to your call to follow and the cries of those in need, eyes closed to your hand extended to us through those that society has pushed to the edge. Shake us, wake us, speak to and through us that we might carry the joy of your word, word to a world that needs so much to hear it. May this story of Samuel inspire and empower us to follow you more closely wherever your, the path may go. We ask this and all things in the name of Christ, our brother and our savior. Amen. It's hard to know when God is speaking, isn't it? Most of the time when God says something, it's not even words that are offered. It's more of a push or a pull, a feeling that where you are in life is either supremely right, you're washed in warmth or supremely wrong, and we feel that sense of absence. It's not that God isn't there, just that we're being pulled in a different direction. The light, warm and leading, shines another way. But sometimes it is more than a feeling. Sometimes God is so insistent on getting our attention that only words will do. The problem is we're not always clear that it's God who is speaking. Often we're crowded by so many things that vie for our attention that we confuse God speaking as someone or something else. This can cause us to dive into work, neglect family and friends, or we end up answering the call of materialism in the form of the newest thing, the next phone, the best car, a pile of stuff calling to us, but not really offering us anything. For our reading today, we have a story where God is calling, but the people present just don't get it, not right away. You might notice in this reading that we're out of the desert. We were in the desert for a couple of weeks before, but now we're out. We've fast forwarded with the people of Israel to a time when they have what's called the Ark of the Covenant, a box in which sat the tablets of the law and soil from the land. In this way, wherever the Ark went, it was believed, God would go also. Gone also are some of those familiar faces like Moses and his brother and speaker, Aaron, but they're not totally gone. There is a connection in this reading through the priest Eli. According to some research, in Eli is a direct descendant of Aaron, so it kind of continues that story even as it continues that priestly line. Another big difference here that we see from previous readings is that <clears throat> God spoke to and through Moses and Aaron often. God spoke often to these men, both to instruct and to guide the people. In this reading, we come to know that the word of the Lord was rare in those days, but it wasn't just rare. The stronger translation of that word rare was that it would be, that word was preciously rare, so that when it came, it was a gift, it was a treasure. But Eli wasn't the best at seeing God at work in the situations around him. In an earlier story, before Samuel even enters the picture, before he's even born, we meet a woman named Hannah. She wanted a child, and so she went to the temple and prayed on the steps, but she did so silently. Seeing this, her lips moving, but no words coming forth, Eli assumed that she was drunk, and he tried to chase her away. But she remained firm in her, in her faith and in her distress until eventually Eli saw that perhaps God was speaking to him through this woman. And so he blessed her, saying, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition that you have made. And then enter Samuel. Hannah bears a son, and according to her prayer, she made sure that he was a faithful child who would join Eli in the temple. So we see even in the beginning of the first book of Samuel that Eli is a little slow on the uptake. And I mean this in the best way, because who among us hears the call of God 
recognizes it, and then answers right away. In our reading today, we again see Eli's ability to miss what God is doing. It might be easy to say that it's Samuel who's missing the point, but as far as we know, he's just a young trainee, a young boy. And so when he hears his name called, it must be in his mentor, it must be Eli. In fact, Samuel is bringing Eli a hint to one of those precious inbreakings of God, one of those precious inbreakings of the Word of God, one of those rare and treasured instances where he must listen. But it takes three attempts on God's part to get Eli's attention. And after that third time, he clues in and helps Samuel figure out what's going on. What happens next is kind of a good news, bad news story for Eli. The good news is that his servant, Samuel, is a true prophet in days where God is not often heard. That's a feather in Eli's cap for sure. The bad news, what many would claim to be disastrous news, is that his line would be ending, that his sons, wicked and disrespectful of Eli and God, would perish and that none of his line would reach old age. It's bad news. It's the baddest of news for a man whose priestly line reaches all the way back to Aaron and ends with him. His response is typical of a faithful and dedicated prophet. Whether the news is good or whether the news is bad, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. That's how Eli reacts. And that's the thing about being a prophet, whether you're Samuel or Jeremiah or Isaiah or any of them. The first message that you're usually called to deliver on God's behalf is usually not good news. What it often leads to, though, is a clean slate, a fresh start for the relationship between God and God's people. Because while the word of God was preciously rare in those days, it wasn't that God wasn't speaking. It's that the people weren't listening. We see from the end of this reading that there is a flourishing in the spiritual lives of the Israelites in that Samuel's connection to God was strong and that people came from all around to hear the word of the Lord. But as we, as we turn the page on another anniversary, 56 years serving God as Quispam Sis United Church, we have to ask ourselves, is God still speaking today? Are we listening? Where is our connectedness to God today? Is it as strong as Samuel's? Are we Eli, slow to recognize the word and acts of God that are right before our eyes? Are we even resistant to allowing the Holy Spirit to work in, through, and around us to the point that we dismiss the inbreaking of the holy as a dream? Or, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, it's just indigestion. It's not God speaking. Do we push away the reaching hand of God in favor of going back to sleep, ignoring the new things that God is inviting us to in favor of what is comfortable and familiar to us? Or are we Samuel, easily woken from our self-induced slumber, by the word of God, eager to walk the path that is laid before us? Do we hear that word opening ourselves, our hearts, to what God is calling us to? I think most of the time, we're a little bit of both. Maybe we are eager to hear the voice of God calling to us, whether it shouts amid the noise of the world around us or whispers to us in our sleep. But when that voice comes, it carries a truth that we are not always ready to hear. It presents a path that we are not always ready to walk. When Samuel woke those first three times, it was to immediately run to his mentor, to Eli. So dedicated was he to that man. He was not frustrated that he had been called in the middle of the night or even that he'd been called over and over with no instruction. He simply got up and said, here I am. And on his mentor's instruction, he offered that same dedication when God calls again. There is a trust that we are called to have in the one who calls us. 
a trust that whatever lies before us, whatever path we're asked, being asked to walk is one that's being watched over. But it's hard. It's hard to give ourselves over so totally. It's hard because having to trust so deeply means having to let go of things that we've been holding on to, things that have made it hard for us to hear God's call and follow in God's way. It's hard because we might think that we have been walking on the right path, only to have the Holy Spirit pull us in the opposite direction. And yet that is the kind of trust that we are called to have, the trust that Samuel had for Eli, that Eli had for God, a trust that when God speaks, we won't be hindered by what we want or what we prefer. So let us wake from our walking slumber. Let us tune our hearts to the God's voice and our minds to God's will. Let us set our feet to God's way and our hands to the work at that new thing that God is doing in and through us. Speak, O Lord, for your servants are listening. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, for your servants are listening. Speak, because we are listening for your whispered word in a world of noise. Speak, and we will follow. Move, because we are watching for the subtle impact your hand makes in our lives. Move, and we will follow. Reach for us, because we are reaching for you, O loving creator. Reach for us, and we will follow. Speak, Lord for your servants are listening. Amen. And now we have a, another gift of music. Uh, this offered by the youth of our congregation. It's one of my favorite hymns. Uh, so let us listen as Ben, Ethan, Amy, and Jacob sing, and Wendy sing, Here I Am, Lord. Yeah. 
we could just listen to that a couple times on repeat. That would be fine. I love that. Thank you, Ben, Ethan, Amy, Jacob, uh, for singing my favorite hymn. Thank you, Wendy, for uh, playing and putting that together. Uh, and those are some of the ways that actually, that's a great segue into this, how we give, because there are a number of ways that we give. And it's not just uh, out of our uh, finances, our treasures. It is out of our gifts, uh, our talents as well. And so we are blessed for all those who offer their talents in the work that we do as a church. And uh, so if you have some talents or if you would like to explore some of those talents that you might have that God may have gifted you with, I encourage you to uh, to share them, to reach out, and we will find a way to let the Holy Spirit move through you as we work together. Uh, as we also think about the ways that we give out of our uh, financial uh, abundance that God has gifted us with, there are a number of ways to do that as well. Uh, through e-transfers, through Canada Helps. Uh, you could also give by giving on par, a uh, very easy way to do it, pre-authorized remittance, or you can just uh, go to Brian's house or call Brian or mail him to, to Brian, uh, a gift that he will surely receive for sure. Uh, and when we get back to in-person worship, there will be that as well. So uh, I didn't mention it during the announcements, but now that I've come back around to it. Watch your emails and watch your, the Facebook page to find out whether I'm pretty sure we're getting back together in person next week, but check to keep an eye on your emails and Facebook just to be sure. And now as we seek to offer our best to God, uh, Stephen is going to lead us in the offertory dedication hymn as we seek God's blessing on all that. As we seek God's blessing on all that we bring, let us offer our prayer of dedication together. We hear you calling to us, O oh God, and so we come to you this day, offering our very selves for the work of building up your kingdom and healing your people. Bless us and all that we bring before you. As a church, we pray to continue the work of reflecting your love on the world for another 56 years and beyond. We offer this and all our prayers in the strong name of our brother and our guide, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I forgot to move us forward. I apologize. <laughs> but now let us move into a time of reflection. As Samuel heard God's call through the night, I'm going to invite us into some silences, some opportunities to engage with the silence in our own spaces. So before we get to that, I want you to acknowledge the space around you, the people, the things that are around you. I want you to breathe deep of the Holy Spirit that also moves in and through this time, in and through you and the place you are in. God is continually speaking. We need only open ourselves to hear it. And so in the silence between and after the words that will follow, I invite you to listen for the whispers of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. And let us hear the word of God as we pray. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I
be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and. Be still. B. Into the silences of our lives, O oh God, speak. Your servants are listening. You know how uncomfortable these silences make us, and yet we make room in our lives for you because you have made room in creation for us. Continue to move in and through us. Speak into those silences. Shout into the noise of our lives. Help us to hear that we might follow. Along with those prayers that we offered to you in these moments of silence, we also name before you those people and situations that weigh most heavily on our hearts. We pray for Scott and Candace. We pray for Joan. We lift our prayers this day for Greg. We pray for Kyle and John. For Rosemary. We pray for Edmund. We also pray for newcomers, for all those who are in isolation. We pray for all who are traveling in these most difficult times. We pray for churches who have been struggling through this pandemic, for ministers that have been searching for a new faith home. We also pray for teachers, for all teachers at all levels as they bring wisdom and guidance to our youth. And we pray for Chris Pemsis United Church. We pray on this, our anniversary, that you might continue to speak 
to speak to us and through us. We seek your guidance, O oh God. We seek your wisdom into tomorrow. Hear us, O oh God, as we offer all these prayers, as we bind them together in the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now our closing hymn for today is... Today we all are called to be disciples of the Lord. And Stephen's going to lead us in singing it. Voices United 507. Take it away, Stephen. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, thank you to everyone who was a part of making uh, this worship service what it was today as we celebrated, uh, again, celebrating 56 years as Chris Pamsis United. It was great to have uh, Stephen's music, the kids' music, the family music. It's, uh, it, it just reminds me of uh, what a gift we are to one another as we strive for this work together. A reminder uh, to keep an eye on your emails and Facebook uh, page this week. Uh, for an update on our in-person worship, uh, but you can always be guaranteed to find me on here, uh, so don't be afraid if, uh, if you can't make it to worship to log in uh, here on Sunday mornings. And now I'm going to invite Ben to join with me responsively as we send one another out into the world to do the things that God has called us to. You've heard the call and know the way.
We see you going before us, O oh God, leading us through night and day. Know that within you lies something treasured by God, a gift that you are called to share with the world. Gladly and eagerly, we go to the world to use all that we have and all that we are in service to in celebration of the God who continues to call to us. Now go with the love of God in your hearts, the peace of Christ in your hands, and the power of the Holy Spirit at your backs to share the good news that you've heard this day. Amen. Peace be with you.